Well, we have a unique home decorating project for you. This is Jeannie Summer Ogero, and you're with Kaleidoscope Collections. And what you have is a wonderful, oh gosh, this is cool, candle holder. Yep. And you have to start, though, with some software. We do. Mm -hmm. Yep. To make this lovely candle holder. Mm -hmm. And we want to mention that these are not real flames. That's this is right. a battery operated <laughs> candle. They are battery operated. And you start with a photo, too. Start with any photo, any digital image, actually. Let's get going. So let's go to the computer. We're going to open up that photo here. And what you see here is one wedge on the screen. And whatever's inside that wedge of the photo is creating the kaleidoscope on the right. You could adjust that wedge if you wanted. You can adjust the wedge. So uh, what we're moving actually is the photo, oh, not the wedge. Thank you. It's like you're moving the photo underneath the template. Oh, and you're creating a kaleidoscope there. That's Every so time you move it, yeah. it creates a different design. Oh, fun. So for the candle holder, we actually need a different shape. And you've got a bunch of different templates that you can choose from. For this one, I'm going to choose a square. Double click on that and you'll see the shape changes in the workspace and now we have a square over here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is again move the photo around. If I click and drag outside the boundary of the photo I can rotate. If I click and drag on the photo itself I can move it around. If I click and drag on the corners I can resize. And this is what gives me the design that I'm looking for for Fine. the candle holder. Okay. So now you might have noticed the candle holder is not exactly square. So when we print it out, first you can of all, make square ones, right? You can okay. absolutely, mm -hmm. but you can also make not square ones. <laughs> <laughs> and we need multiple copies of this. So we're going to print multiple, and I'm not going to maintain proportions because I do want to stretch this out and make it not square. So I'm going to do three and a half for width and four and a half. Oops, just typed in three and a half, four and a half for the height. And I want four of those because there's four sides. And I just click Add. And you'll see that they appear on nice. the screen. So that's the preview. Now, also notice that I added a quarter inch print margin. And then I'm showing the cut line so I know where to cut those. Now, we also have to print the top right. of the candle holder. So to do that, that actually is square. So we're going to change that to three and a half, three and a half. There's only one top. Click Add. Now, it doesn't show up on the first page because it won't fit. But if we go to the second page, there you can see is. that it's there. So then we'll just set the printer to print on the paper. Now, this is a flat matte photo paper. It's not glossy photo paper. You could do it glossy if you wanted to. Um, it's a little bit easier to work with a matte paper. And when you say this, you can see the light through this better, perhaps? Not see it. It doesn't have any sheen to it at all. Right. OK. It doesn't have any sheen. Um, and then you just click print, and it goes to the printer. Okay. And this is what we have this when we print them out. Exactly. Let's go to the next step. OK. So what we need to do next is actually just cut all of these out. And you can do that with your paper trimmer following the lines. Exactly. So once it is cut out, you're going to score it. Now, we don't have a mat to score on here, but what I usually do is just use my ruler along the very edge of the printed image and then use a scoring blade. If you have any other contraption that you use to do scoring, you can use that too. But you want to score each of the four edges sure. on all the pieces. And then once that's done, you're going to actually fold it back. So I turn it over and I flip it up and I fold along each of the score lines. Now you'll see these corners have been clipped. Once I have folded all of them, and I, I use the scoring blade to do that as well, then I come in and I just clip the corners. Mm -hmm. That makes it easier to fold once we get to that point. Next... And you do that on all four sides. I do that on all four sides, on all the pieces. The other thing I want to do is add some ink along the edge. And the reason for that is once you fold it, if the paper cracks at all, then you're going to see a white edge. So I usually go from the back, I hold it up, and I just go along the edge like that. And if it's messy, it doesn't really matter because that's going to be hidden anyway. Okay, let's move this on to the next step. All right. Next thing is we're going to add some holes in it and that allows the light to go through. So I'm using a paper piercer to do that and I just go around all of the design and for the top you're going to cut out the center sure. based on the design, add um, tape all around the edges and then you're going to come in and put these together. So the way it works is you've got the bottom folded up on each of these, the left side has a piece of tape, each side of this has a piece of tape and I just come in, take off the tape backing press it together, and then go like that. So I get all the bottoms together. That look like this. Looks like that. And then you have the tape here. You peel that off, bring it up, 
and just press it together. And then I like to use the tweezers because that really helps me, especially down in this area here. And okay. if I hold it like that, it can come in and actually oh, sure. press like that. And all these directions or instructions are on our website. Let's yep. show the final again. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And you can see the light coming through. We also have a square one and a rectangular one that was actually a finger painting right. that you scanned. Exactly. Jeannie, great job. Thanks. And we'll be right back.